In the beginning of the workbook, I, I say something that sounds a little strange at first. I'm saying that fear is the perfect problem. And, and no problem is the perfect problem. Nobody wants to have any problems. But if you're going to have a problem, fear is a great one because it gives you a perspective on the knowledge of God that is just utterly beautiful. It's as if God reveals his, just his, you know, the, the most precious aspects of his character to people who struggle with fear. So in that sense, if you struggle with fear, get ready to really know God in a way that is, that is wonderful and deep and, 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 and very attractive. If I would choose one passage or one word from Scripture that God says to fearful people, out of, the, of course, the thousands of things that he says, I would probably choose the word manna. Okay. It's been the most helpful for me, and it's that seminal event in the history of God's people where he demonstrates that he will be faithful in the midst of perilous situations. There will be manna the next day. When you need the manna, it will be there for you. I find that to be one of the most precious things that God says. It seems as though scripture identifies three clusters of fears with thousands of different kinds of fears in each one of those clusters. See if I can identify them in, in, in my particular order today. I would say my number one fear today is death. Okay. Uh, technically, I'm over the hill, okay, which means that uh, I'm over 50. Uh, so chances are I've lived more of my life than I have in front of me. And so I think about death quite a bit. Uh, it's very edifying at times to think about it, but there are fears attached to it, specifically fears of how I might die, because I've seen a number of people die and I've seen painful deaths. So that's one fear, and we can find that in all of our hearts. It doesn't matter how old we are. A second fear is the fear of other people specifically the fear of not just what they can do to us physically, which gets into the fear of death, but it's more our reputation before other people. What will they think of me? How much time we spend on that particular fear? I wrote a book on that, but I still, I still struggle with it myself. So that would be a second fear. The third fear, oh, maybe I should put this third fear first, is the fear of financial ruin, okay, or fear of not quite having enough money. Uh, obviously, it's not an artifact of a capitalistic economy. We find it throughout the scripture, and, and all of God's people have known something about the fear of money. So those are the three fears that we can all probably find in our own hearts. If we look at our lives, we, we usually find that we specialize in certain kinds of fears. For example, well, I'll, I'll mention my wife because uh, she's a very interesting case study in this. She seems to be a relatively fearless person, but she has been afraid of going on airplanes. So the question is, why, you know, why does she have that particular specialty? Uh, a fascinating phenomenon that took place is her fears seemed to depart quite a bit when our daughters were married. <laughs> because, and, and, and you can see where the fears came from. How will my daughters be cared for if, if I die in a plane crash? Once she saw that they were cared for by other people, her fears seemed to evaporate quite a bit. But can you see the spiritual roots in that? Will, it, it's, it's about our relationship with Christ. Will he care well? Does he love my children and will he care for them if I'm not around? So we can specialize in particular kinds of fears, but usually, and this is my experience, if I have a real high-pitched fear in one area, chances are it doesn't travel alone. I'm going to find all kinds of other fears that sort of accumulate around it. The, the first one would be Exodus 14. In Exodus 14 is a passage where the children of Israel are coming out of Egypt and God gives them this unusual edict, double back so you're trapped. Okay, so the Egyptians are in front of you, so the sea is behind you. And it, you know, very briefly, what that story does for me is it reminds me when, there, when there, I seem to be in an impossible situation, I know that this is not outside of the way God works with his people. In, in, in one sense, what I'm hoping for is as I grow in Christ, impossible situations or opportunities where I say, hmm, 
where, where will the Red Sea part this time? Okay, So that particular passage in Exodus 14, I find personally very meaningful. My fears are very under, understandable in, in, in light of how God works with his people. The second passage would be two chapters later, the passage on manna. And in that passage, God says to me, I know that you're afraid about tomorrow. Uh, and you have good reason to be afraid about tomorrow because because it looks scary, okay? It looks like you don't have the resources for tomorrow. And God very graciously says, I will give you all the manna that you need when you need it, okay? You're not gonna have it all today, but when you need it, you will have it. And how many times have I looked at a difficult day and said, it's impossible. I'll, I'll never be able to make it through. And at the end of the day, I say, well, he gave, he gave just the right amount of manna at, at just the right time.